What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Katie Pips, and uh, here with another top-down analysis. And let's just get right into it. So I know this week is NFP, so we got to kind of watch out for the dollar fake out direction, whichever way it's going to go. Possibly not even move, you know, because NFP does that. These days, FOMC has been moving the market more than uh, than NFP, but you know, nonetheless, the market could still move. I like to keep a clean chart uh, every time I come on here. Well, not every time, but the beginning of the week at least. So let's see what we got going on. All right, let's full screen mode this, and then let's look just really quickly at the monthly candle on everything. Right, so we're coming back into like the middle of this Bollinger Band. I'm gonna keep the bands on today. I'm also gonna use the RSI a little bit today. But um, we're definitely, you know, at an area on the monthly. You can see it a lot better on the weekly. So we're at a pretty key level here. You know, we wicked back there at one point, and then uh, we had some major rejection here and here, and then we're seeing it again. So this zone right here is more or less a weekly zone, very important zone. Um, if it breaks this week, then we should expect to see prices get all the way up to here eventually. But uh, when you go on to the lower time frames, or really just the daily, you can see kind of the little rising wedge pattern that we have here. And we're at the top of it, or we were at the top of it and then it rejected. So, um, you know, this is a reversal pattern. We are still underneath a very key level. And so I personally don't really want to buy into the dollar at this point. I think there's more opportunity to the downside than there is to the upside. And I personally still want it to come all the way back into these candles down here, where we had a clean break and it just never made a big retrace. It just retraced a little bit and then just kept moving, kept moving, kept moving. So I want to see prices end up coming all the way back down into here, but that will take, you know, a long, long time. So I'm not really, I'm not really expecting that at any moment. What I want to look at now is on the four hour and kind of where we are kind of more, um, now more for intraday so obviously this thing has been moving up very nice trend up however you want to draw your trends you know it really doesn't matter if you want to draw it like that well we could be at the top um getting ready to move up again but regardless i'm looking at structure so i want to go and i kind of want to wait not really necessarily wait but i see this level on the four hour pretty key level down here where um, we broke we retested couple times and then moved up. So I'm going to keep this down here. I'm just going to keep it blue. And uh, let's make it this now. Keep it blue. Just make it a little lighter. And ultimately, this is like the big swing point. If price breaks through here, then we should definitely expect lower prices. But until then, we're trying to find like intraday moves. Now, one thing I do want to note is from this low to this high, you know, we're coming into some fib levels. If this thing is going to just blast through this level here, it's more than likely gonna respect these fibs and just keep going up, All right? So that's one take on it. You can see that the RSI right now, the RSI is still below 50 on the one hour. So that's still a bearish sign, but what it has done is it's broken through this little trend that we have. So there is a sign that momentum could be coming back to the upside here on the one hour, but it is still below this 50. Once it crosses this 50 with some, I guess, some force, then that would kind of give me more indication that the dollar could start to move up from here. Um, but personally, like I said, I don't really want to buy into the dollar. I want to look for sells. So with that being said, I would need to really wait for the dollar to probably get all the way back into this supply area to look to sell it. Um, and it's what would be really nice if the dollar does get up into here and it falls again and shows that it's not going to break here, then we'll know 
we'll be able to get into a lot more cells. But um, I wanted to just note this area right here for possible bullish move. But since I'm not really looking for a bullish move, I'm gonna delete it. Um, I do see this kind of bull flag. So the probabilities and everything are a little bit against what I want to happen. Um, but nonetheless, I'm not trying to buy it right here. I don't wanna buy it just to take it up to this level. Um, if it breaks through here, you know, maybe, or if it gives some type of, you know, pattern, then maybe buying it. But right now I'm kind of just looking for the dollar to continue to, to drop, right? All right, so that would mean I'm looking for the Euro to, to move to the upside. But let's see what we got going real quick on the monthly. Okay, last month ended in a pretty sharp down candle, and I have the volume on as well. Weekly, last week was a pretty sharp weekly candle that took out these equal lows, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to mark this here, and you can see these equal lows pretty much got taken out. I believe these did as well, so let me mark this, yeah, these are the equal lows I was talking about, so those got taken out with this candle. And you know, there's not a lot of volume left right here. So price is either going to come back up into this range, into this area, or up all the way into this area, or price is gonna slip through and, and find our next little area of support way down here. And so if I want the dollar to go down, that means I'm kind of looking for this to pull up. But it hasn't, it, it just doesn't look good yet, right? It could, it would, this would be basically the bottom of that move if that's gonna happen. So uh, I know a lot of people are probably looking at this as like a break and retest to the downside. I don't necessarily like to play a break and retest when I'm all the way at the lows. So I respect that, um, that we are, you know, breaking and retesting this possibly. Um, and you'll be able to see it on the lower time frames more, but I'm not necessarily going to buy it because of how low it is, right? Or, uh, sell it because of how low it is. I'm only going to look to buy it. So this has a wedge pattern as well on it. And, you know, it clipped off this. Mind you, the divergence on the whole pattern right here. Uh, the momentum is starting to come out of the RSI. So let's go to the four hour. And, you know, we haven't broken trend, not a trend line, not a real heavy structure point. This structure did get broken a little bit here. Um, if you want to count that, you can see it better on the one hour, but no big moves in the MACD have been made yet. It's all just little moves. And, and honestly, the way I teach the MACD, this would be setting up for a sell to the downside. But like I said, it's already sold off so much. I'm not going to sell it again. I'm just going to wait for the next opportunity to buy it. Now, a good opportunity one would be for it to come down into this level down here and look for buys or wait for it to make one more lower low and watch the momentum make a higher low. And that'll be a good sign for, for a bullish move, possibly. So right now, um, I'm basically just waiting. I don't want to play this move up, even though, you know, it doesn't look terrible. It really doesn't. This move right here and uh, look for buys off this area. I'm gonna mark it up and look at it in the morning because if there's if there's any type of uh, divergence on the lower time frames and we're still in this area, then I might look for buys. But what looks like to me is gonna happen is this level down here, it just looks like it's gonna get swept out and then price is gonna make its move to the upside. So um, I'm gonna keep this here for tomorrow morning if price is still flagging out the way it is, which I highly doubt it um, because it's already almost there and we still have like, I don't know, 10 hours till New York session. So it probably has a little bit of ways, but you can see the volume that's coming down in right here. Um, if it does just go sideways all the way till then, then I think we'll have a good opportunity for a bullish move tomorrow. Okay, GU. See what we got on G right now. Okay. So real quick, monthly candle. 
bearish coming back into the middle though. You can see this is actually a monthly zone right here that we're, we're coming into. So I'm just gonna mark it off uh, right here. You can see how monthly candles have respected this area very well. We get the break though, and then we're retesting right now. So um, this is in an area where it could respect here and, and eventually move to the upside. Uh, of course, it did respect in this area as well as supply. So let me just mark that. There was this supply area here that it respected. So we're kind of in between zones right now. When we go to the weekly, left a nice wick to the downside in this area. If it's going to move out of the area, it usually will test it more than once. Not every time, more than once. You can see how when it left this wick over here on the weekly, it came back and tested it again before it fell. Um, same here, it tested it this week and then the next week it came back up and tested it and fell. This week it didn't do that. On this week it just tested it and fell a little bit, but then it came back up quick. Now we're back in here and we tested it once. So I, I wanna see it get tested again, I do, um, or even a little bit lower, you know, down into this area still kind of respecting it, but just showing some divergence because right now there's no divergence on the daily really. Um, you know, there's, I guess, slight, slight divergence right here with um, this kind of coming at an up angle and this coming at a down angle. But the way that it fell out, it, it, it broke these lows really cleanly, okay? And we're kind of right back in that level we tested. So, uh, more than likely, we're going to get to see this fall back down. The momentum is still strong on the daily. Four hour, the momentum is pretty strong. There's a little, it's not really hidden divergence, but, um, you know, once this starts to roll back down, uh, break structure, because I'm sure on the one hour structure looks a little bullish. Yeah. Once we start to break these, this area right here, I think we, we will probably head down and test this area one more time before it just takes off. Um, if that's what it's going to do. Um, it could very well just be respecting this area here and uh, holding at this level to, to fall, and, and really fall, and extend all the way down into these levels, which um, I personally need to see this level break before I really expect that to happen right. But um, let's see where that would line up. See, it's not... In my opinion, I think what happened here is we held a pretty strong level and, and we're probably going to see, you know, a double bottom in this area before we move up. But we'll see what happens. The pound has been kind of, um, kind of weak. So if the dollar does move to the upside, then this is going to fall for sure. For sure. All right. What happened to my, to my music, man? Shuffle. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm seeing the possible downside on this, no doubt. But for me, I'm going to look for buying opportunities somehow. Um, or I'm going to really wait on some type of structure to break. If this breaks down during London tonight, which is hard, then I might look for a little opportunity like this to get into the cell to bring it down here on intraday. But other than that, I would like to see it, you know, however it gets there, I don't care. Um, I would like to see some divergence on the higher time frames, right? bullish divergence. So uh, I'm actually going to take this kind of off. There's not really a trade on there right now. I'm going to put this level out because it's a really strong level. I'm going to put this level out and then, um, you know, I'm going to draw this out. It needs to break it and then we can come back down. So this was a trade opportunity we had last week. Off of AU, we had a nice impulse, retrace in 78.6, then popped out. It was a good 6.5 to 1 trade. But 
Now let's see what we got here. Let me just check. Okay, it looks like to me it's looking like it wants to hold right here and go up. Middle of this band. Once it crosses above the daily band, we're like confirmed, but you see this momentum shift right here. And then we'll, we came back down and retested it and moved up. That's a good sign for, for the pools, in my opinion. Okay, so from here to here, see how the structure kind of shifted, big shift in structure, it broke the, the middle of the band and then we came back down into the 78.6 and we respected. So we're still below this band on the daily. Once we get back above it, that's when this should start to move to the upside. You can see on the four hour, it are, it's already back above it. So what I'm gonna play is this move right here from this high to the, that low to this high. And I'm gonna put this in this area right here. So, um, Let's not get confused. Let's change these to a different color. All right. So the overall swing, and now we're going to try to get into this little swing. It might only, it might only go to about right here for that AU. It might only get to this area, but um, yeah, that's what I'm going to play. I'm going to play that swing right there inside of this bigger swing. So I'm looking for this to kind of come down and form somewhat of a inverted head and shoulders here. All right, something like that. That's what I'm looking for. But um, got to wait to see how price action looks when it gets down here, of course. You can see a pretty clean zone right here at the 61.8. So I like to see that. Um, we'll see what happens on AU. I'm going to draw this out. Boom. All right. U Chef. U Chef kind of took a dive down. I mean, um, look at this on the monthly real quick. Okay. And the monthly candles haven't been doing a whole lot after this big move up. Okay. We had that big move up. We retraced kind of quickly, and then we've kind of just been not doing a whole lot, right? Um, not really any, you know, clean levels. I mean, you could call this a level up here more than anything. We had a touch, touch, rejection, rejection, touch again. Um, but where we are right now, I wouldn't really say it's a clean level. <clears throat> and I don't really need this line here. I just know that there was rejection here, so this is a strong zone up here. Um, but what we were looking at ultimately was for price to respect this fib and start to extend back into this range. You see how this was a whole bunch of sideways movement and we kind of fell out. I, I, I expected it to come back into the middle of the range at least just because that's all it's been doing is range and range and ranging down here. Um, but it's just been taking a lot longer than I expected. Um, you know, and then now we're getting some pretty, pretty big bearish pressure kind of in this consolidation. I think we might come back down to test again one more time. Because <clears throat> this four hour, four hour structure looks like, you know, it's getting ready to, to turn over. This momentum is starting to pick up on the four hour. Um, if we're looking at the RSI, you know, we're getting lower lows in the RSI, complete shift right here. Um, I do think we're going to get another pullback and then a move to the downside. Now, if this pullback and then move to the downside doesn't happen, what's going to happen is it's going to slowly make another move like this and then push up and barely break these highs, um, reaching into kind of this level. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm like this and then move up and then make the fall that I'm looking for. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen just because we have so much momentum falling here right now. So um, what I'm looking for is, you know, I'm going to fib this out right here. I think we're going to get a good um, trade off the 61.8 coming in right here. Boom. 
and I'm going to look for cells right there. Now, the only thing that would kind of suck is if it came right into these equal highs and then fell. So that's, you know, that could happen as well. But if that, if that happens, I'm okay to take that, take that loss because this is where the impulse is really coming from. You know, it already kind of did a little retracement here and then we're getting a big move down. So I'm looking for the retracement and then another move to the downside, kind of back down at these lows or these lows. See that extension right there with that volume, that's powerful. So that's what I'm gonna look for on uh, UChef retracement. I need it to be, I don't wanna to be too fast, but if I see heavy rejection in here, then that's gonna give me the, the clue that I really know that this is gonna fall and continue down. You can see the momentum is kicking up to the downside. So the next move will probably show a little bit of divergence, but we'll see what happens. All right, UJ didn't quite finish his head and shoulders for me. So I'm gonna delete this and look at what we got on the monthly really quickly. I guess something's wrong with my music because it will not, well, I can't hear it. Yeah, it's not, it's not one to, it's not one to continue to play for me. So let me check some out real quick. Um, let me go to songs. I'm gonna just play whatever I got in this bitch. Maybe, and I got a lot of Drake. So let me go to artists and just play some. Because I need a little bit of music. Let's put shuffle. Let's play. Huh. Some must be up with my my stuff. Oh well. No music. <laughs> All right. I could do this though. I could do it real fast. Let's beat the system. So, yeah, so on the monthly, of course, it looks like a big bull flag, but recently it's been doing a whole lot of nothing. And you can see the range right here, a whole lot of nothing, pretty much. So, um, you know, I'm not expecting a whole lot out of UJ. I'm not expecting a whole lot out of UJ. Um, we got a pretty big rejection right here. Turn a little. Pretty big rejection right here. So it looks to me like there's some um, possible downside coming on, on UJ. There is some bearish divergence. This. My mouse died, so I'm using the pad and I'm not used to it. You see, we got one, two, three pushes up, one, two, three to the downside. So it's kind of a sign I look for for um, reversals. And that was last week, so it's a weekly. Yeah, this looks like the downside um, could be really coming. And it actually does look like a little bit of buy cough right here. So the, this would be the spring. Um, so yeah, I'm going to play this to the downside. I know a lot of people are most likely going to be playing this move right here. And that's, um, I, I totally see that move, but this looks like very much like Wyckoff distribution. In fact, let me just check real quick. Wyckoff. Yeah, it looks exactly like this. So, um, let me find like a better move. Here it is. This right here. You get um, BC UT UTAD test. BC UT UTAD test. It's literally like PSY, PSY. Like I could label this thing off almost perfectly. So um, this is where um, what I'm going to see now is downside move, retracement, and another downside move. 
So we have the beginning of this downside move. Um, there's going to be a retracement and then another downside move. So uh, let's go down to the lower time frames and we can see what we got. All right, yeah, everyone's going to buy this when it comes back into this area. No doubt. Like right here, there's going to be so many buy limits. Probably even right here, actually. Where are we at? Right now. But right here, there's going to be a bunch. And that's good. That's liquidity to move market. But right now, what I'm going to be looking for, I'm going to be looking for sales. And the market gets back up into here. Because I do think this Wyckoff scenario could play out very, very well. Um, come back up into these areas and then start to drop out. And eventually drop all the way to these lows. So it might be worth something holding. Um, unless, of course, NFP just brings the dollar through the roof, then this is going to continue to the upside. But what I'm seeing with the Wyckoff distribution right here is um, pretty not obvious, but um, just looks just dumb similar. And we got a better picture of it right here. So we're in phase coming in, we're in phase C, coming into phase D right here. I think we're gonna get a little bit of chop right here. And then a drop, come out, drop, come out, big drop. Leaves back down into here no matter what though. So I'm looking for the cells. Could be a little risky. This could take off really heavy after breaking out of this little range. But to me, this is just perfect distribution. EG. What do we got? Um, consolidation on the weekly or monthly. Not a whole lot going on at all. Um, and you can still see it on the weekly as well. Just hasn't really picked the side which way it wants to go in a while. We'll mark this off right here. Haven't broken that level in since May. And then this level down here, we haven't broken since April. So we're just in between these two weekly levels, um, right in the middle. So it's kind of in balance mode right now. You really like to want to wait until the market's out of balance to really make it take a shot at it. But with these three candles right here, it looks pretty serious. Where's my, I haven't played with volume all day. A little bit of stopping volume there. You can probably see a, another move to the upside before if, if it wants to go down again. I'm not really caring for um, caring for where it's at right now. Other than, like I said, if it comes back into a level like this where it's clearly rejected it multiple times, then I think that would be the best bet to send it back to the downside just to follow this range where it's going. You know, it came up to the top, now it goes to the bottom, came to the top, probably coming to the bottom. So, you know, this would be the only price that I, I would look to sell it at. Anything else? Um, I mean, right here, possibly look to possibly buy it because it's just so strong uh, demand that came in right there. But I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really want to put my stop loss right here just because that looks just like a uh, trap, right? Um, this area where the market came down pretty quick and then came back up. That's where the market came into before it went off, but there's so many equal lows, just a bunch of liquidity right here. So I'm personally gonna wait till um, we either see one of two things. I wanna see a sharp move down and then a sharp move up. If I see this pattern, then I'll look for the pullback. Um, other than that, I'm gonna just wait for sales in this, in this price area, 86.13 pretty much. Um, to take it back to the downside, kind of head and shoulder look. Um, but like I said earlier, I don't really like the way EG is looking right now, kind of on a higher time frame, just right in the middle of in between zones. Uh, so it's kind of a harder one to, to judge. And same thing with uh, UJ, or sorry, GJ. It's pretty much right in the middle of you know some daily zones. Let's look at the monthly candles though real quick. Okay, so we've just been 
chilling. So you see this big push up, and then we've just been kind of slowly correcting. On the weekly, hasn't really known what to do. Some weeks it's up, some weeks it's down, some weeks it wicks it, and the next week it comes back and wicks up here. Uh, one level I do want to push out or uh, call out is this level here. I haven't been able to get below that level on a weekly um, yet. And then past couple weeks, we haven't even been able to break above let's see, here. So see how we're kind of right in the middle of the range. It's not really the best market that I like to play because um, at any point, if you come back down and test, test the lows and then go back up and test the highs, at any point, you can just take off to the high, double test it, triple test it, fake out. And so um, when you're in a range, that's when you really want to wait for a fake out because then you know um, you have a better idea of where the market's going to go after the fake out. But for me, um, if I had to pick a way, it looks like the structure is starting to change, you know, to the upside a little bit. And we got this big downside move right here coming into that fib. So that's why, you know, being in the middle of the range, you're going to have a lot of different um, uh, biases, right? Uh, for me, if it comes back down into, you know, if it comes back low, basically just down into this level, um, you can see there was a bunch of rejection down at this price. Then I might look for a, a buy with a stop loss right here that doesn't look like a whole bunch of liquidity down here. I mean, there is a ton of liquidity down here on a like kind of higher time frame wise. But for me, I'm not. I'm probably not going to play GJ. I see the structure starting to play out. It could buy up from here. Um, if if there's a trap on it, it's going to be this right here. Where it slides through here, grabs this liquidity, and then moves kind of to that side. So I'm not liking stop losses right here. Uh, looks like the going to get swiped. So that's why I'm waiting. Um, but either way, like I said, with EG, when it's in the middle of the range, it's just not the, it's literally right, almost right in the middle of this range. So I'm, I'm not playing with GJ, most likely. Okay. GA. On the monthly, what do we have? We're kind of in the middle of the band, a little bit above it. You can see we had pretty nice drop and then retrace. I'm thinking it's either going to cup and handle or we're really falling from here, basically. Like this is the top. On the weekly, we're right in the middle of the band as well. You can see, I guess, this level here. As we couldn't break it, broke it, retested it. Let me see if this is a better price right here. No, not really. Let me keep this and go to the daily. And so on the daily, what we were looking at is this high to low and how it came right off the 61.8 and then started to fall. At this point, you know, it, it it's coming to these lows down here and starting to want to move up. I think it has a possibility to maybe come up and form somewhat of a harmonic, but I think we're at a level where it's getting ready to, to drop again. So we might come back up here and hit this extension, maybe like a 78.6 extension. Possibly, it might not even go that high. It might not even form a harmonic, but this is a, a definite possibility that I see before the downside really gets um, taken off. I think the I think that we're at a swing level. You see this type of um, momentum right here. That's pretty deep. So I'm looking for this to eventually start to roll over to the downside. It looks like the sellers are kind of more present. Um, let's go down to the four hour and see if there's any setup present. Like I said, I would I'm kind of waiting for price to get back up here. So taking any sales before that would be a little risky, in my opinion, unless we get something right here. Uh, let's take it from this, this, and you can see this little bit of uh, this little range liquidity built up right here. If we get a spike into this and then a big spike down, when I see that pattern, I'm going to sell off of it. I'm not going to wait for 
I'm not going to wait for this liquidity up here to get taken because there is liquidity up here as well. Um, and that would be the harmonic. Either way, I'm long-term bearish on GA. Pretty much all of, I'm, I'm more bearish on the uh, GDP than I am bullish. That's what it looks like. Um, depends on what that dollar does though for GU. Okay, we're coming into some interesting levels on EA. So let's check that out. EA had a, um, you know, a big move down, a big retracement, a spike, and then a spike down. So to me, I'm overall bearish on this. I'm overall thinking that this move here is going to eventually send this to the downside long, long, long term. And we're starting to see on a weekly, you know, we get, we have this high move come back up into this consolidation. And then we dropped out pretty strong, we traced and we dropped out pretty strong last week again. So now we're here on the daily, we're at the bottom of a band, you know, not really the best spot to look to sell. Um, you can see this strong demand that we haven't broke in a long time. So with the overall bias of me wanting it to drop, um, but it being at demand right here, it's hard for me to try to sell it just yet. I would need a retracement. And even at that point, you know, it would be better if we could just break through the demand. And then the next move, I would be more comfortable with the downside. But um, we got to play what we have. Uh, right now, you know, a buy off this level wouldn't have been the worst idea. It would have been a little risky because where do you put your stop loss, right? But um, it wouldn't have been, you know, a bad, a bad look. This is going to be what I play. This move here. I'm going to look at what price does when it gets all the way up into this level. And the reason why is because it looks like to me, they kind of pumped price to sell price. So there might be some little mitigation that needs to happen here. It looks like maybe they came in to buy to sell. So that's why I'm playing this level right here. It's also kind of just a little key level. I just throw a line right here. You can see we respected, respected, faked out, uh, respected here a little bit, faked out. So it's not a bad price. Um, looking for sales in this in this area just to follow what's been going on. And it'd also be kind of a harmonic. So. All right, gold. <clears throat> So just read everything and mark it back up. Monthly on gold has, has signs to me that you know it's it's either going to make another big run up or it's exhausted. Now, just with the history of gold, it's probably gonna come back down again um, from here long term. So uh, knowing that, we could be kind of in this corrective phase for a little bit. On the daily, we're coming into this middle band with the structure on the lower time frames looking like it's kind of broken to the upside at this point. So there is this level here that has just been I've just been looking at this thinking, if gold is gonna to go to the downside again, this has to get hit eventually. That's what I've been thinking. Um, here's another level down here that has just been insanely respected. So, you know, whether gold makes its way down here one more time before it comes back into this level, or if it makes it into this level first and then goes down, we don't know, but I'm, Kind of putting my money on it coming up here one more time and then making a big rally gold likes to make big fake outs before it makes big moves as you can see just look to the left every time it has made a big move down before it, it made a big move up so i mean you could literally go through gold and just look at that how every time it makes a big move up not every time it makes a big move up but before it makes a big move in one direction it usually makes it in the other one first right and then down. We get to move down and then a move up. And then we get to move up and move down. You know, it's it's pretty much like that. So 
all the way through, down up, down up. Big move up, big move down, right? Big move down, big move up. So I'm kind of waiting for obvious manipulation. Um, we could be seeing it kind of right here with this move down, and then we get a move up. So we could be starting to slide up. If I'm going to buy gold, which, like I said, the structure could be changing right here on it with, you know, this kind of break, obvious break right here, big momentum that came in, you see it on the MACD, big momentum, I would definitely wait for it to come back into these levels. So it would be like a good minute for me to look to buy gold coming all the way down into the 786. I'll extend it, but I would wait for that 786 really. Now there's equal lows right there too. So that's, that's a little alarming, just sitting right there. It could make its way to fake out and then move up again. But either way, I'm putting my money on this thing, trying to get up above these highs longer term and then slide down. Like I want to pump way past these, maybe 20 to 40 points past it and then start sliding down. Then we would know the direction that it's going to get to, 1675 area. Um, right now, it has this bullish divergence big time. So, you know, I expect it to continue to move down a little bit, especially from here. If it makes one more move, because right now we see one move, two moves. And if it does another move, um, I'm definitely gonna look for a sell. So this is another key level right here that we have major respect at. So if price gets up into this level and it has this divergence, I'm definitely gonna look for some type of sell in this area. Um, 1783, basically 1784. Yeah crazy level right here so watching out for that um but we'll probably look for buys down in this area after it takes out these lows sharp and then sharp probably going to be kind of a probably have to put a limit order type of situation for the vix just real quick let's look at the vix helps me with the indices and we did close the week bullish, but it has the whip. So this was the Corona, uh, no, this was the 08 um, scare. And then this is the coronavirus. We could be starting a move to the upside. You can see this big bullish move in the correction. It could start to move up again. Um, but with the wick right there, I'm not sure. The RSI is leaning towards the upside, right? It broke and retested the 50 EMA, or the 50 um, in the, just the middle. And we are getting the slow line, which is what I consider a trend line. It's kind of pointed up and it's above 50 as well. So the indicators, which are lagging, the indicators are saying we're possibly leaning towards the upside with the VIX. Now that's very bad news for the stock market. Um, if this does continue to the upside, if this breaks these levels here, if this breaks these levels here, this thing has potential to just run, right? It's gonna run straight into this level, like straight into it. And if it doesn't reject here, we're going back up into these levels, most likely. Um, and this thing, if, when it's going to move, or if it's going to move, it's going to move extremely fast. Um, because that's what happens with the stock market. When the stock market drops, it drops faster than it goes up, basically, and then recovers. Um, so let's look at the stock market, uh, the NASDAQ. And I'll just keep this on here for now. NASDAQ printed a very bearish month. And so, you know, we should expect, we should expect this to continue to the downside, uh, ultimately. Now, I know usually when there's a dip in the market, you want to buy it, but when it's overextended like this, um, you want to wait for some type of retracement. You just do, because we haven't seen it extend out like this in a while. So when it's extended out like this, you want to wait for a retracement. On the weekly, 
it has, you know, started to retrace back into these levels where you can see in the past it has moved up. But at this point, we've been extending, extended, extended, three extensions up. You want to see some type of an A, B, C correction, right? You can see right here when there was the uh, virus, we were extended, kind of extended, 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 and then we got a boom, a huge correction. I'm not saying that's what we're gonna see right here, but we're seeing a bigger pattern of that right now, in my opinion. Um, I've been saying for a while, maybe since, maybe since the beginning of the year, that we are gonna see some type of a drop in the market just because it's so overextended. Um, and now we're kind of seeing it. And at this point, you know, it might be played out enough for it to continue to the upside again because these markets almost always are in the bull market it's rarely a bear market as you can see um and so you know the the best look is to try to look to buy it but you see the structure now the structure has changed to the downside so if you're buying now you're definitely buying against the structure on the daily and down um, these lows were broken, candle held below it, very clean break of these lows right here. Let's just mark these off. Very clean break of these lows. Um, now we're pretty much at this low and there's a couple of little areas right here. The next area it would probably stop would be right here. And that's where I'm guessing it's going to go and get to, um, this kind of break and retest little area right here. Even I could kind of put it like that. Um, and you can see where the volume's at though. Volume is, let's bring a lot of price into it, so the majority of volume is right here, okay? So we're starting to slip through this, and if it slips through this, it's definitely getting into this pretty quickly, okay? All the way down into here, which are, you know, some prices that people probably don't want to see, but we, saw, I mean, it was just in May when price was there. So, you know, this thing has just been going up, 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 up. It really does need to correct before, it can get any higher. You need to see some type of correction before it gets all the way up there. But for now, uh, to get into anything, I'm definitely going to look for um, sells on a deep retracement, you know, something like this. I want to see a nice retracement and then a move to the upside. I do think that it's at a point where it probably will or possibly could start to retrace. So it might not be a bad idea to wait for some type of um, retracement pattern just because this looks like some distribution with the, or accumulation with the big spring down, getting a test now possibly for a move up, but I'm not looking to buy at all. I'm waiting for, you know, the bigger move to the downside to try to position myself for another uh, possible move down. Now, that means these should look very similar. Um, let's look at this on the monthly. You can see just dumb extension up here, right? Just ridiculous. Uh, this was the coronavirus and then we've just been up, 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 up. Now we printed the bearish month, so we should see a bearish correction. I'm gonna say at least to right here where this midline is and just see what that looks like on some other time frames. Okay, on the weekly, you know, we would have to break, retest, and drop to even get to that. It's not just gonna, it, it most likely is not just gonna fall straight to it. So there's way more to, to this move than just a downwards slope. In fact, we're at this level right here where we're seeing some bullish divergence. Now, personally, I think this has another couple legs down on it. Um, at least a little bit. That's an A, B, C correction. So we could, it, it very well could move up from here. It's, the stock market really does like just bounce sometimes like hard, right? We're in an area where it could bounce hard, bounce just randomly hard right here, just kept going up. Same right here, right here, double bottomed. On lower time frames, we're kind of double bottoming, uh, possibly like some accumulation with the Wyckoff. A little bit of bullish divergence so i'm not looking to sell yet uh, if i sell this is going to be up here in this area but i like the way the um uh s&p looks better all right 
respect. And then US 30 honestly has like came into this level a bunch of times and respected it. So I'm kind of like questioning the, the US 30 a little bit. You can see how like we were down here, price swept up and made kind of a fast move. That's one of my signs to tell me that this might be a bottom. So if we do start to see structure break on any of these, it's not a bad look to look for a pullback on an intraday for a move up. Because at any moment, these could move to the upside. But I do know that the VIX is showing possible bullish movement. So, you know, intraday, this thing usually goes down. Long term, I mean, long term, this thing usually goes down. But the intraday volatility is, it could be there. We can see spike at any moment on this thing, which would spike these things down. So just kind of be aware that the volatility is definitely there on these right now. I mean, it's not even session. This thing is already moving 117 points. So um, just be aware that the volatility is there on these um, indices. All right, Bitcoin. Monthly on Bitcoin closed, you know, not how I really wanted it to, but that's okay. Um, I don't think any of them closed great. Not at all. Not at all, right? So monthly is like, eh, that's not the best. But, um, you know, our weekly candle that we got last week was beautiful, right? It's literally like a beautiful break and retest of the uh, Bollinger Band for a possible another move up. I will say that if we ever, not ever, but if we start to break below this level here um, with like strength, we're probably most likely going to make lower lows. Just throwing that out there. Um, if this isn't the bounce that like Bitcoin needed, then I'd, I think we might be, you know, Headed to the downside, but I'm optimistic. I think we're we're about to head like up pretty pretty good. Um, you can see right here there was like this little or there's a move up here, and we had this ABC wave. It was like a perfect ABC wave, ABC wave, and then just impulsed out of it. I want to see retracement and then a big move up into this level here, 58, which is almost all time highs. So. Um, if we can get this, let's go to the four hour now. And we're already starting to, to possibly move out, but I see some divergence. So kind of watching for this thing to start to retrace soon. Um, I would, wherever it stops, if it continues up, I'll move this up. But whenever it stops, that's where I wanted to um, put my fib and then bring out this and wait for buys in this area. It'll be like an inverted head and shoulders, catch the buy here, and then write it up to 58, which should be close to the extensions. Okay, 55 is the extension, so um, I would take it at 55. But 58 is probably the next level that's going to get hit on. Um, right now, yeah, there's major divergence, so I would definitely stay out of buys. That's probably gonna do like one last pump and then dump down into here and it'll look like a little ear like that. And then we'll probably see a move like this into this area where you had rally, base, rally. And that's a supply and demand pattern, come back into the base and take off. So um, there's a lot of moves in between that you can play, but that's exactly what I think is gonna happen on Bitcoin, literally exactly what I think. Um, which means all these are going to do similar, most likely. This one looks really good for a buy as well. Let me go down to the monthly first. Just check this out again. Okay. Weekly, perfect off of the 20 EMA, basically, 20 moving average. It didn't come into these fibs. It just barely missed the 61 EMA, so 50% retrace basically um and it did the same thing right impulse re a b c retracement 
I, the thing I liked about Ethereum's retracement is it kind of took this liquidity out first and then moved up. So it's the same thing as Bitcoin. I'm gonna take it from this low to this high and wait for price to come back down into this area and then look for buys. And with the way the market's looking, like I said, if it breaks this low, we're probably going down. And since I haven't really talked about it in a while, I'm, I don't think um, AB has either. I just wanna show this <clears throat> pattern. Uh, overall, market cycle. And where we could be, right? Go here. Um, I'm not going to click it. I'm just going to talk about it, right? So um, we very well could be in complacency. Okay, we had this big run up on Bitcoin, and then it dropped, and then we're making a move up. Okay, we could very well be right here. Let's just look at where we kind of are. Um, we had this big run up, a drop, and then a retracement. So the same thing: big run up, drop, and retracement. We could literally be right here right now. Um, and this thing could just start to drop. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're long-term investing or if you're looking for smaller plays, this could be played out. And we could be seeing uh, uh, lower prices. And I was on Ethereum, but I mean, Bitcoin's doing the same thing, right? Big run up, drop, retracement. Now, I want this to be more or of a like a, distri a distribution up here and then accumulation here and how we're breaking out, retesting the top of the accumulation zone and making move up. And then we're just gonna make higher highs. That's what I think could happen as well. We just gotta understand where you are in the overall market and like I said, if it breaks these lows and we continue this bear structure, then I, we're probably playing, we're probably in complacency and about to see some crazy emotions from crypto traders. Um, if I'm wrong, well, if I'm right, then we won't have to worry about that. We'll see this move up. Either way, kind of know where you are in the overall market so you know where, um, you know, where your odds lie. Now, all these are going to look the same. So, um, you know, this one actually is a little cleaner because it, it did retrace all the way down to the 61.8 off this move up. 61.8 and then moved up again. So there might be some FIB lineups here. Let's check this out real quick. Low to high. Yeah, wow. So the 61.8 lines up perfectly right here. So uh, 153 on Litecoin should be money. This should be money. That's some crazy fib lineup. And then um, XRP, it did hit the 61.8 on the daily as well on this run up. So the next move I'll be looking for right here. On XRP. So I'm currently bullish on them uh, after this little momentum that I had. I want to see another leg of the momentum. I mean, if it's going to drop, it's most likely going to come up a little bit higher and then drop. All of them, right? A little bit higher, come up a little bit higher, and then for Bitcoin to just come up a little bit higher, and then um, and then they, they'll do the drop if they're going to drop. But um, that's it for me, pretty much. Um, I'm waiting for this thing to get up here, look to sell it, which means kind of waiting for these to get down a little before I buy them. Like I said, I'm waiting tomorrow morning. If this thing is still in here or rejecting or going up from here, then we're good because I don't trade at this time right now. I need to see this, uh, do this right now pretty much come out of this. If it comes out of that, then tomorrow morning, this will be the setup. Um, same thing, uh, not really with GU. It's not the same thing with GU. 
GU, I'm not really wanting this to continue up anymore. I'm kind of looking for this to come test down all the way down here. So I'm gonna have to see the GU. Maybe if we get a move above this high and then back below this low, then I'll look for sales. Um, on AU, it's kind of already sign off. I needed to continue down a little bit. I'm gonna look for buys down in this area. Uh, off of this impulse. New chef, let it come up, reject, drop, UJ, come up, reject, drop. EG, I don't really want to play it. GJ, I don't really want to play it. GA, come up, drop, EA, come up, drop. Gold, come down, pop. These are probably we could retrace here, but I would, if you're in sales, I would hold because they could just fall tomorrow. Bitcoin, a bunch of crazy stuff. Ultimately, retrace, go up. So that's it for me. Appreciate y'all for coming on. Anyone who watches the recording, make sure you give it a like and a possible follow if you like what we're doing here on Next Wave. We're going to post this on YouTube. So y'all have a good one. Peace out.